Sunderland 2, Newcastle United 3 in the Under 21s Premier League 2 this afternoon. Joe, good afternoon of football from Newcastle's youngsters and a, a really good result and they definitely needed it. Absolutely, I think you, you, we both came in today when we saw the team sheets. Sunderland had six first team players. You do think it's going to be a struggle for Newcastle. Um, Newcastle's, some of their main players are injured out in internationals. Um, some are even with you know the first team in Dubai, so you do think they're going to struggle. But to be fair, they put in a really good performance. They barely gave Sunderland a sniff. Really, they got the early goal. Sunderland, to be fair, got it back, and then straight away Newcastle got it, and they never really looked like relinquishing the league. It was a lead. Sorry, it was a really good, competent performance, and it was a senior performance. It, they didn't look like young kids against a lot of EFL players. You know, they looked like a team who belonged there and a team that you know deservedly won. Yeah, I'm just saying as the wind uh, threatens to <laughs> knock over our camera. But yeah, I thought it was a bit nervy towards the end. Sunderland scored in the 95th minute of the game. There was 10 minutes added on, so that brought it back to 3-2. And it was a bit of backs against the wall to try and see out the wind. But Newcastle got it over the line with relative ease at the end. And then, yeah, Sunderland equalised in the first half. It was um, Corey Evans, 33 years old, scoring against a bunch of... Um, Kids, it was a great strike goal, to be fair to it, it was an was excellent excellent strike, goal yeah. but yeah chose Sunderland had a lot of um, senior experience in in their team today Newcastle didn't at all actually I'm looking they had Amadou Diallo who's played first team minutes but other than that I think I think it's limited um Jamie Miley's obviously played for all the first team in pre-season but yeah and um, in terms of the, the players who played today who, who would you say stood out to you because a lot of people watching this probably won't be familiar with a lot of the players. Yeah, I think the first one's obviously Kyle Crossley. He was he got two goals, but he was brilliant. He led the line really well, I think, and he took his goals well. He didn't, to be fair, he didn't have too many chances. I don't think Newcastle had too many chances in the whole game, but what they did have, you know, they put away. And yeah, Crossley was was really good. I thought Diallo, I thought he was he was good. He got the assist at the end. I thought he was good. He was lively. I think his end product just lacked a little bit, but I think that's. That'll come with his development, but he was really good. And I thought uh, Heffernan at the back, I thought he led the team really well. And as I said, they were against Mason Burstow, who come from Chelsea at Sunderland. He's highly rated by Chelsea. And the fact that he barely had a sniff, I think he had one overhead kick, which was a bit speculative. But other than that, yeah, they didn't really have anything. Else. So I thought them, them three in particular were really good. But it was a real team performance. They were all excellent across the park. Um, and even when they had a couple of injury issues, it came off. Alfie Harrison came off. Jordan Hacker came off. The subs did well as as well. So yeah, I thought it was a real team performance. But uh, yeah, Crossley was was the main man for me, and he got the nine in my uh, my player ratings. Oh great! And uh, yeah, I thought Heffernan was good as well. Like you say, his header uh, put Newcastle back in front in the first half, and you can tell he's he's come from a a good good academy in AC yeah. Milan and he's, he's impressed for the under-18s, he's scored in the UEFA Youth League for Newcastle as well and making that step up to the the 21s, he, he looks looks at home there and, and probably just had one one shaky moment in the closing stages of the game where he let the, the attacker get the wrong side of him but other than that, yeah, I thought he was excellent and Alfie Harrison I was keen to watch because there was a bit of fanfare over him in January because he was Newcastle's only real, real signing, um, even though he's only 18. And I thought he, he looks like a player who's, who's come from a from a good Man City academy. He, he has that swagger, I think, as you put it, where yeah. he, he glides through games, he, he looks comfortable on the ball and has that pace and that ter turn and energy that you want to see from a attacking midfielder. And I thought he brought something to the game today and was involved in the in the sec in the first goal, sorry, and the third goal for Newcastle as well. So yeah, I, I was impressed by him and good to see him and probably needs a bit more football at, at this level, playing under 21s regularly before he's ready to step up and uh, pose a serious threat into the first team. But yeah, I was certainly encouraged by him and encouraged by Newcastle's performance in general because went into this game sitting bottom of the, the Premier League two, needing needing a win against yeah. the rivals and, and they got that and, and deserved that today. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, as I mentioned before, against a, a very experienced Sunderland team with Bradley Dack and Corey Evans in particular. You know, they've got loads of EFL experience. So to turn up against them and to put in a really good performance, yeah. It was an excellent day for Newcastle and it's just a shame that someone like Eddie Howe wasn't there to watch out because I think he'd have, given, you know, he would have, he'd have loved to see that uh, that performance there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously in Dubai at the moment, but you spoke to Ben Parkinson after the game. Ben Parkinson. 
Ben Dawson. Ben Parkinson <laughs> was playing on the yeah. wing. Ben Dawson you spoke to, what did he have to say? Yeah, as you can imagine, he was really impressed with his team's performance and maturity really against against the Sunderland team. I think he was he was particularly impressed by the players that managed to step up in terms of all them injuries and the players missing. And he particularly was impressed by, I think, Jamie Miley. He was, he's obviously had a big injury. And he, he was very confident. He got substituted near the end, but he was really good. And it's good to see someone like Miley, who's had a, you know, a fairly lengthy injury and had come back his sort of second or third game back and to put in a good performance as well. And yeah, he was particularly keen on stressing the fact that we've seen Lewis Miley coming, you know, go from this age to the, to the senior team and he wants he wants his team to be able to see that pathway but also if that pathway isn't available in Newcastle to see pathways elsewhere you know with a couple of lone players were moved on as a permanent sort of in January up to Scotland and he, he just wants Newcastle to build the best players possible and if that helps Newcastle in the future obviously that's a benefit but if not he just wants to make this you know these players really good and I think we saw today there's certainly some talented players in that group that just need to hopefully get some wins together I think because being the bottom of Premier League 2 doesn't reflect well on Newcastle as a club and hopefully in the future they can develop that and then this win will inspire them to hopefully move away from that from that danger and then you know get move up that league because there's no reason that team should be sort of 10 points behind Sunderland because they were they were really good to do.